Ice Rider in a position where I can safely just max Hailstorm and max Quake. Uh, the other approach you can take is, I think, Dynamaxing the Gastrodon. Uh, one of the questions I even have is, does Restroom come out into this matchup, right? It doesn't do really any damage into things like uh, Kyogre, uh, but it can still be solid against Rillaboom and Zacian. The thing is, if the rain is up, you don't even really necessarily KO them, and I think Reshiram is not exactly the strongest Dynamax option here. So for Landard, I expect him to play a more Trick Room-centered strategy and try to play around the Gastrodon or Dynamax Calyrex Ice Rider. For Stefan, I think, you know, uh, making sure you bring Rillaboom so that you can cover for Gastrodon support in, and then, you know, use, utilizing Grimmsnarl to get early disruption uh, can also be valuable. All right, Incineroar Kyogre out on the field for Stefan, and Reshiram and Q, the two leads of choice for Leonard. Uh, so definitely, I think this is a result of them playing in the past, because yeah. these are not game one leads that you see. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, I mean, like, there's so much context here that, you know, we unfortunately don't have because we didn't see them play previously, but the thing is, anytime you go up, in, you know, into a matchup where both players already know, like, okay, I know exactly what items you have, you then create very specific lines of play and game plans that I think it's very hard to judge, like, you know, understand unless, like, you are, are in their shoes, right? And so, uh, the Reshiram lead here is interesting. Like, it, I, I think it's, like, a relatively weak Dynamax option because you just don't do very much damage in a Kyogre. So the question I have is, do you actually end up Dynamaxing it? You could max and then go for like max Quakes onto Incineroar uh, and then use that to actually boost like your special defense. Uh, Mimic, you actually in a position to potentially set up the Trick Room. Sometimes we see Taunt on Incineroar, so that's one way to you know deny a potential Trick Room. But um, yeah, for Leonard, you could also just use Restaurant for like early damage output. Don't Dynamax it, but just like chip things a little way, a little bit Earth Power here and there. So yeah, no Dynamax from either end here. Water Spout, full health Kyogre going to deal a ton of damage to that Restaurant, but that Assault Vest already coming into play, allowing it to hold on. Q unfortunately busts its disguise, takes a little bit of damage because of that, but uh, will still be relatively healthy, all things considered. Earth Power from Restaurant, connecting with that Incineroar, activating the Shuckaberry and bringing in Incineroar down to a uh, little bit less than half its health thanks to a critical hit. And uh, Mimi Q with the Will O Wisp into the Incineroar spot. So no Trick Room. Possibly trying to predict a uh, Rillaboom or possibly Zacian switch in. But instead, Rilla are Incineroar getting the opportunity to switch after Mimi Q attacks with that Will O Wisp, which is super important. Yeah, so I can kind of see the idea behind the Reshiram lead here, where you solely use it to get rid of the Shookaberry on Incineroar. It gets a critical hit, which is actually really nice damage as well. So I think the scary thing here is now, though, like you mentioned, there's no Trick Room up. So, you know, both of these Pokemon are Pokemon often don't carry Protect either. And so suddenly the combination of just um, Behemoth Blade and Water Spot, I think, is really scary, right? And so. Then you gotta ask yourself, okay, uh, what does Leonard have in the back that can take the combination of Water Spout and Behemoth Blade? Gastrodon's an okay switch in, but you know, the question is, whatever uh, is next, even if you switch one Pokemon out, the other is still going to take a lot of damage, and you can't reliably, like, uh, switch both Pokemon out here without something getting knocked out. So it is going to be the restaurant making the switch, and there is the Gastrodon coming in. Gastrodon the Vintage Beauty, which is a <laughs> lovely title there for that lovely slug of a Pokemon. Uh, Sacred Sword into that Gastrodon to deal a little bit of damage. Water Spout will boost Gastrodon's special attack by a stage, but I think more importantly here, should knock out that Mimikyu, ensuring... Oh! 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 Wow! Q able to hold on long enough to set up Trick Room, and now this Zacian is in a ton of trouble. What? I really did not think Mimikyu would survive I didn't think that. So, so either. It's got to just have so much investment in bulk there, right? I mean, like, normally you expect to see max HP at least, and then some players like to run defense, uh, attack, or special defense. So maybe that's just max HP, max special defense, Mimikyu. And the, you know, we know that Stefan's Kyogre doesn't necessarily have the most special attack investment either. And so as a result, Mimikyu's actually able to survive. That's actually such a critical survival because I thought, you know, Leonard wants to get Trick Room up, but how do you get Trick Room up after that turn one? Well, the answer is you just survive with the Mimikyu here. And so that drastically changes things because now you can at least, you know, hang around for a little bit longer. Um, you know, Gastron here can go for the decision of Dynamax, but I think it's really scary to do so because you still have to be worried about the Rillaboom in the back. And I think now that you've actually set up Trick Room, Leonard's going to angle to get the Calyrex Ice Rider out eventually and activate the policy onto it. And there's Calyrex coming out. Yeah, just a plain old switch, removing that Mimikyu from the field and sending in that Calyrex Ice Rider in its place. You know, with such low health, I would have assumed that you let Mimikyu get knocked out and that's how you get that switch in. But instead, Earth Power oh! missing the knockout on that Zacian. Gastrodon now at plus two special attack, but, oh! and the Origin Pulse missing 
the Calyrex Ice Rider. Gastrodon is knocked out by that play, Ralph, but what a crazy turn there. That Zacian just barely holding on, and Kyogre unfortunately missing its mark. Man, they're, the last two turns just crazy, like survival, survival, miss. Oh, it's just absolutely wild right now. So is actually going to come out rather than the Mimikyu, and the reason for that is, like, yes, you can bring Mimikyu out. Yes, you can Shadow Sneak your uh, Calyrex to activate policy, but then, like, you're staring down two you know, Pokemon that still put on a lot of offensive pressure right now. So with Reshiram now, you at least have a little bit more damage output. And you can see the downside of running Assault Vest Kyogre rather than an item that boosts your special attack. Because I think if Trick Room doesn't go up in this game, Leonard's in a really tough position. That's why I was kind of surprised to see the Willowisk read on turn one rather than Trick Room. But still manages to get it up. That's a crucial damage calculation for both players to know for the remainder of this set as well. But talking about the game currently, you know, Reshiram can put on a lot of offensive pressure onto both slides. You know, you can just go for an Earth Power. Um, I think you've got to be, you, like, you've got to be thinking about, okay, what's in the back, right? Rillaboom is certainly an option. And I think Calyrex here has to be careful about taking too much damage from the Kyogre. And we haven't seen uh, Dynamax yet so far either, and that's going to be really critical right now, especially with Gastrodon being eliminated. You can Dynamax Kyogre with more confidence now. Incineroar's Intimidate will lower the Calyrex's attack by one stage, which could be important, but it looks like Leonard opting to go for the Dynamax this turn. It is going to be that Calyrex Ice Rider. So even though it's at minus one attack, it certainly has the opportunity here to score an easy knockout and get that boost right back up. Kyogre, is it gonna go for that Dynamax this it turn? Is. It is. And that's a really uh, interesting Dynamax for Stefan because it will double that Kyogre's HP and give it some bulk and possibly give it an out against this Ice Rider. Yeah, what's interesting here is, you know, like the Calyrex could just Max Quake, right? Like, it's, it feels unlikely that Zapdos comes out to this matchup, so Max Quake would get the knockout on Zacian even if it protects, and then also, you know, covers for an Incineroar switch out here. And so there is the Max Quake, you know, really safe option there. The only reason you'd want to consider Hailstorm is if you're reading into like a Rillaboom switching, but it's actually going to go into like Kyogre just to start chipping damage. And I think that's actually really important because if you look at Leonard's team, the damage distribution onto Assault Vest Kyogre is just not really there. So even though it's not much damage, you're just trying to slowly chip away at it. And slowly chip away indeed as a Earth Power from that Reshiram will do a little bit more damage. Max Geyser into that Calyrex Ice Rider puts these two uh, Dynamax Pokemon about at the same place health-wise, which is, again, important to watch as you have to imagine if both these trainers continue focusing in on those Dynamax Pokemon, it's going to give a lot of freedom for this Incineroar to pivot in and out. Yeah, very critically as well, there's only two turns of Trick Room left, and as soon as Trick Room's over, like, Leonard's team just is pretty slow, right? And so, uh, Fake Out here, great way to deny one more attack, and, you know, it's fine to lose the uh, Incineroar at this point. The one downside for Leonard here is, like, if, you know, you do target the Incineroar and get the Knockout, which he will do. Uh, you do get an attack boost on the Calyrex, so, you know, gets a little bit more offensive power. But the question still is, how does Leonard really deal with Kyogre? And I think the answer is ideally to stall out its Dynamax. You know, we haven't seen the full moveset on Calyrex Ice Rider yet, so if you had, like, a Seed Bomb into Max Overgrowth, that would actually be really valuable here. But otherwise, I think this Assault Vest Kyogre is still just a nightmare to deal with, even with the special defense boosts. Another Max Geyser going to connect with that Reshiram. Oh! Thanks to the two special defense boosts, it's able to hold on with just one HP. The survivals in this game have been so crazy. Oh. Mimikyu hangs on, Zacian hangs on with two HP. Now the one HP survival. Rillaboom is the last Pokemon here, and so that's going to be really nice for Grassy Glide Pressure, obviously, onto the Reshiram. Uh, the Mimikyu in the back from Leonard's end is also really low, so Glide onto that slot. You know, it's basically a guaranteed KO onto Reshiram or uh, the Mimikyu, but you might not necessarily want to go for it immediately because you're worried about a potential max hailstorm just one-shotting your Rillaboom. And so if you have Protect here, which it does, that's the best option here as you're able to now style out the Dynamax as well as the Trick Room. Protect actually one of the more recent adaptations that Stefan mm -hmm. has made on this team for the Rillaboom, and it's already paying off, allowing Rillaboom to take that uh, max hailstorm relatively comfortably. You know, still does take damage through the Protect, but still around for the next turn to provide some pressure with those Grassy Glides. Draco Meteor from that Reshi Ram does connect with Kyogre, uh, will drop its special attack, but I don't think that Reshi Ram's gonna be sticking around for much longer. Max Geyser will do that one damage to finally pick up that knockout. Yeah, just guarantee the KO there. Mimikyu switches in, you can Grassy Glide that slot. Now Kyogre can just go for, you know, single target water type attack onto the Calyrex. 
One thing that is interesting is, you know, you could still bring on Mimikyu, Shadow Sneak, activate your weakness policy, but uh, Stefan still has Zacian in the back. And so it feels like this game is basically wrapped up. And this is the tough thing for Leonard's team. The damage distribution into Dynamax Assault Vest Kyogre just really, really like, isn't there. And even though there were some pretty big survivals in this game, the survivals don't really matter if, like, you're not able to get the knockout on the opposing end, right? And so one interesting adjustment that Leonard may be thinking about is, okay, what if I bring Amoongus in the subsequent game? I use it to just spore the Kyogre, and uh, that way, okay, even if I can't knock it out, I can knock out all of Kyogre's partners a little bit quicker and then deal with Kyogre in the late game post-Dynamax. Yeah, and that kind of strategy of focusing on one Pokemon to just keep alive while you knock everything else out, uh, I think is really popular in this format in general. Shadow Sneak <laughs> not going into the Calyrex, instead going to do a little bit of chip damage to that Kyogre. This Water Spout now not going to be as powerful, but does do enough to pick up the knockout on Mimikyu, which I think is what Stefan was hoping for there. Uh, the big question that I have is, uh, Wood Hammer into Calyrex Ice Rider, how much is this going to do? It finds that knockout. Yeah, I, I think, you know, you can angle for, like, a trick room there and then try to, like, Glacial Lance and sweep everything, but Stefan making a play, like, basically covers everything there. Like, there's uh, Water Spout, Wood Hammer, just, yeah, the best play there because there's not really much damage that you're worried about and you don't want Trick Room to go up from either Pokemon. So this is a, a tough matchup for Leonard, I think, and the adjustment, uh, like, maybe you make is just to bring out the Amoongus. It's really tough because, like, I think... I was talking about Gastron as a Dynamax option, but... Given that Stefan's bringing the Rillaboom, it's kind of hard to feel confident in Dynamaxing it. So then the, the idea is, okay, it's a really good max option if you can knock out Rillaboom. How do you knock out Rillaboom? It's going to have to be like Calyrex Ice Rider. I think Leonard also, you know, um, maybe wants to get Trick Room up a little bit earlier. And the other thing is that, like, if you don't lose your Gastrodon, it is really good to wall Dynamax Kyogre. Because Dynamax yeah. Kyogre essentially can't even touch it, right? Um, and you can't even go for spread type attacks. It's single targets. So you just absorb all the damage. And so I think Leonard essentially needs to uh, conserve the Gastrodon a little bit better. In the previous game, he switched it in on a Sacred Sword and it took, you know, almost 50% of its health. And so this time around, you know, protect its health a little bit better. And uh, yeah, like, if, if you're able to do that, and especially if you're able to eliminate Rillaboom, then it can be a Dynamax option. Yeah, I think the other thing Leonard probably should recognize from that game one, and uh, possibly even their Swiss games as well, is Stefan felt pretty comfortable using those spread water moves in front of the Gastrodon yeah. to boost the special attack. I'm very curious how that damage roll played out, where the Zacian was able to take that Earth Power, you know, whether or not that's something that Zacian was trained for or not. Um, only Stefan knows that at this point in time, but uh, knowing that your opponent is comfortable boosting your special your special attack in a situation uh, where, you know, normally people see Gastrodon, you have a Kyogre, you don't click those water type moves. Like, acknowledging that play style, I think, is going to be important for uh, Leonard, especially if he does try to conserve the Gastrodon a bit more, like you were just saying. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I was talking about conserving it, but I think leading it is also interesting if you expect the Kyogre lead once again, right? Like, against Incineroar Kyogre, suddenly uh, Gastrodon can... I wouldn't Dynamax it because Rillaboom can still come in and just do a lot of damage, but at least suddenly you, you force um, the decision. It's like, okay, do you, like, Kyogre is in a weird spot where if you have Gastro plus any other Pokemon, like Mimikyu, for example, okay, if you use your water type attacks, it's just going to boost Gastrodon immediately, and that's already pretty scary. Uh, and then Gastrodon can also read, like, let's say you expect Rillaboom to switch in turn one, right? Uh, what, if you, what if you go for, like, an Ice Beam onto an Incineroar and nail the Rillaboom as it comes in, right? Because the Rillaboom here, as we saw, has Protect. It's not the Assault Vest variant. So, like, yeah. a plus one Ice Beam can actually do a ton of damage. You could even go for the crazy play of, like, Dynamaxing Gastrodon going for a Hailstorm, <laughs> but that's, like, a really aggressive uh, prediction. However, the reality of this matchup is I think it's tough for Leonard, right? Like, they've played in Swiss, they uh, and, and Stefan was able to win, as you said, pretty comfortably in that set as well. And so as a result, I think even though, like, the play I mentioned is, like, seems really crazy, you have to make some big plays yeah. in this set to win, I think, because it felt like, you know, Leonard, it just, it's just really tough for him to gain an advantage because his restricted Pokemon generally just don't match up very well against the Fonz, and this Assault Vest makes it so much tougher to break through Kyogre. Yeah, I, I think that, I, I like the idea of making a crazy play here because you really have to go for it. I mean, your tournament life is on the line. You lose one more game, then you're unfortunately out of the top eight, and you have as much information as you're going to get at this point. Yeah. You know, you have your information from Swiss last night, you know, maybe you went back, reviewed that, uh, you know, maybe you also looked at the stream as I know some players do after day one. Um, so you have the tools, it's just whether or not, I guess, you feel confident in yourself making that prediction. I think the other approach is to just get Trick Room up quicker and then yeah. actually get the policy activated on Calyrex Ice Rider a little bit faster, basically, because yeah. I mean, it didn't really come out in that last game, but 
um, if you're able to do it, then Calyrex Ice Rider at plus two can do considerably more damage, especially um, if you're able to get like uh, Incineroar as it switches in, if you max Quake it. Uh, like Incineroar will normally come in to try to you know reduce your attack, but let's say you have the policy activated, you're at plus two, Incineroar comes in, you're at plus one, you max Quake Incineroar, get the knockout, get a special defense boost, suddenly Calyrex can actually snowball the game out of control. So yeah, I think like one approach is just to make some crazy predictions with Gastron, the other is to get Trick Room up faster and then use Calyrex and predict those instant switch ins. Well, it looks like we're getting the same lead here from Stefan. Again, that Kyogre and Incineroar. Leonard once again going with the Mimikyu and the Reshi Ram. So tried and true, these players have played it out and these are their leads that they're confident will give them their best chance at success and moving on into the top four here in Indianapolis. So yeah, this time around, like we saw the we saw Willowis last time on Slay Incineroar, so maybe you just go for the Trick Room on Mimikyu. Or maybe Leonard's just confident, like he's done the damage cuts. He's like, you know what? You're not gonna knock out the Mimikyu with Water Spot because I know I have enough investment and like you not running a special attack item uh, makes it a little bit more powerful. So let's well, see. Well, no will wisp no Trick Room. Instead, that Calyrex Ice Rider is the switch in for Leonard which is quite the adaptation. You get it out on the field earlier, which is great, uh, but you don't necessarily have Trick Room set up yet. Stefan switching in the Rillaboom for the Incineroar. So again, another big switch and a really a Pokemon that is quite threatened by the two Pokemon on Leonard's side of the field. Ooh, okay. So starting off the game with the Dynamax here, uh, this time around, we see Reshiram and Calyrex on the field simultaneously, and I think uh, Reshiram Dynamax, not something I really expected going no. into this, but you got to try something new, right? Like, what, even in the last game with all the survival, something, it felt like it just wasn't working. So this is actually a third game plan we didn't really talk about going into this battle, but certainly an interesting adaptation. Water spout from this Kyogre. Oh almost knocks out that Calyrex Ice Rider, does a good amount of damage to the Reshiram. Max Quake connecting with the Rillaboom. It's not very effective, but will boost that Assault Best Reshiram special defense even further. I think that this Calyrex Ice Rider unfortunately has too much damage on it to survive another Water Spout, but this Reshiram, quite the threat. Yeah, you know, able to at least get a good amount of uh, damage off, or I guess it's a good amount of chip damage on a Rillaboom. I think like, the problem for it is that the damage output isn't really amazing. I'm not even sure a Max Flare or Max Wormwind will KO Rillaboom, and that's what makes this really, really tricky. You are at least able to get special defense boosts, and so now there's the dynamic of, okay, Stefan probably feels pressure to just KO the Calyrex Ice Rider so Trick Room doesn't go up. Calyrex can go for a Protect here to kind of bait out that pressure, and then Reshiram can go for a Max Flare, for example, or a Max Wormwind. You can keep going for Quake to boost your special defense as well, but I don't think that's as valuable right now. The other thing Stefan has to worry about is Gastron switching in, and what's really critical is, like, do you die Dynamax the Kyogre, right? Because uh, unless Gastron's eliminated, it's actually really like uncomfortable to Dynamax the Kyogre immediately. And Gastron switches in here. I mean, Stefan went for the Grassy Glide onto the Calyrex slot. I think this is going to be really difficult to win. So let's see. No, no Grassy Dynamax, Glide. Dynamax, no Grassy Glide. Protect from that Rillaboom will keep it safe for one turn. That Water Spout, again, going to be boosting the Gastrodon's special attack by one stage and dealing just a little bit more damage to that Reshiram, who will fire off a max flare in the rain through protect on that Rillaboom. Some really good chip damage, but I think most importantly, putting this Rillaboom within range of a knockout from either this plus one Gastrodon or the Reshiram. Yeah, it also did a fair amount there. Like, I think it may have actually been able to just knock out the Rillaboom, um, even with the rain being up there. So, you know, good damage count to know there as well. So, Rillaboom just protected right here. Gastrodon can go for the seemingly obvious protect and then uh, that, that actually completely changes the dynamic of the matchup, right? Because I feel like Stefan's best way to deal with the uh, Gastron is just the single Grassy Glide onto it. And so uh, the way Leonard, like, you know, kind of played these first couple of turns, I think is really cool because it's like, okay, I know Gastron's really good in this matchup. The one thing that beats the Gastron is the Rillaboom, so let me, like, force it out uh, and try to get some good damage onto it. And I think because Stefan hard switched into the Rillaboom on turn one, uh, now put into a slightly awkward position. So here it's like, you know, you would want to conserve the Rillaboom, maybe switch it out because you just committed the Protect. And then Gashvon could make the read here of just going for like an attack immediately, not going for a uh, Protect, but we'll see. Protect is generally the safer option for it here. Incineroar coming back out on the 
the field to take a couple of attacks for that Rillaboom and uh, keep it around to maybe come back with those grassy glides when it's a little bit safer for it. And uh, finally seeing the Dynamax from Pangi, it's, or from Stefan, once again, it's going to be that Kyogre, uh, which certainly will be able to get back the weather control, which I think is going to be important, but uh, cannot do that with the Gastrodon on the field. Yeah, a little bit difficult for now, but I think the idea is to start chipping away. What becomes really interesting is, is if the Gastron has recovered, because then it's actually pretty difficult to KO. And oh, it's going to be Max Strike from Hyper Beam onto the Gastron. That's actually one way you can deal with Gastron effectively. And that's one of the upsides of running Assault Vest Kyogre. Yep, this was something that Stefan let slip in his interview the other day, which uh, is quite the surprise. I was quite honestly surprised he mentioned it. Uh, but that, hy that uh, Hyper Beam Max Strike going to deal a ton of damage to this Gastrodon. Max Flare does a good amount of damage to the Incineroar. I think this Earth Power should be able to knock it out, uh, you know, after that Chuck of Berry. But still, you know, knowing that the Max Strike is on that Kyogre and knowing that that is uh, consistently going to be a two-hit knockout on Gastrodon, uh, which is something that he calped for, uh, I think is really important in watching this matchup play out. Absolutely. Notably, uh, Gastron didn't protect in front of Rillaboom as well, expecting the Rillaboom to switch out, say, hey, I don't think you're going to try to grassy glide me because that's one of your win conditions. But uh, the Hyper Beam actually, I think, drastically changes this because it yeah. suddenly means like Kyogre isn't actually walled by the Gastron. Normally, most Kyogre sets are when you're running Water Spot, Origin Pulse, Ice Beam, Thunder. But the Assault Vest Hyper Beam tech here, absolutely huge. And that just makes it so much tougher, especially because uh, last turn, Leonard didn't offer the Protect, right? So Gastron just eats up so much damage. Yeah, you can Protect this turn, but then you're just going to faint from a Max Strike the subsequent turn. So now you've got Rillaboom out. You can fake out the Restroom and just strike the Gastrodon. If you're Leonard, maybe then you want to consider just protecting the Gastrodon, um, letting Restroom take the fake out. The upside for Restroom is it's in a pretty good spot right now. It can't really take very much damage. And even if you eat up, like, a fake out and a Max Hailstorm, you'll still be okay. And Gastron recognizes, okay, this is the one way I can really win the game, so let me make sure I don't like risk getting knocked out. Maybe a great switch in for a potential max strike here. Yeah, that ghost typing will really come into play. Also still has its disguise up. Oh. Play rough, connecting with that Reshiram, getting the knockout, and Kyogre left max striking into Mimikyu. Uh, so a great defensive switch from Leonard, but unfortunately losing one of his restricted Pokemon as a result. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was so tunnel vision on Stefan bringing fake out back out. I didn't even realize it was Zacian. <laughs> <laughs> so so the Zacian obviously putting on a lot more offensive pressure. Uh, Mimikyu, a great switch in into the max strike there. But, uh, you know, now you're at a point where you can double up onto the Mimikyu slot, right? And yeah. potentially deny a uh, Trick Room. And if, you know, if you don't have Protect on Mimikyu, just faints. Gastron can go for, like, something of Recover and Earth Power, but I don't think an Earth Power will actually get the knockout onto either. And so I think it's important to deny Trick Room right now, because uh, if Trick Room gets up, Gastron or Trick Room can be a nightmare to deal with. Exactly. And if you're using Max Strike as well, I mean, not that it really comes into play with these Pokemon on the field, but you have to worry about dropping your opponent's speed under Trick Room. Yeah. I mean, that's just something that... Uh, I, I Certainly, these players probably know the info, but I would assume that Stefan's Pokemon are going to be consistently faster anyways. Uh, Zacian not wanting to take any super effective attacks from that Gastrodon, going for a Protect, but Gastrodon going to Protect as well. Uh, this means that Mimikyu is essentially guaranteed to get Trick Room up. Max Lightning, though, will break the Disguise first, so... Uh, we'll have to see, did Leonard go for that Trick Room play like you were mentioning, or is this going to be an attempt to connect a Will-O-Wisp onto that Zacian like we saw early on in Game 1? Well, this is really critical. I think, you know, Trick Room just feels like the safer option here. Uh, the question is also, like, how much damage can you do in the late game? But it is the will o -Wisp, so ah. excellent Protect there by Stefan. That is a fantastic play, and now you've also blown the Protect on the Gastron slot as well. So uh, Stefan now in a position to, you know, launch multiple potential attacks off into it, and you know, Gastrodon here doesn't really have a safe switch-in option either, right? You know that there's the Calyrex Ice Rider in the back, but uh, it takes a lot of damage there. So, yeah, no Trick Room going up. And the other thing is that Stefan still has so much damage output. Like, you still have both of your restricted Pokemon at essentially full health, which is just so, so powerful right now. I know, a Sacred Sword or a Behemoth Blade here would knock out probably either of these two Pokemon. And then you have the Water Spout on top of that to possibly knock out that Mimikyu. And I think as a result, Leonard going to switch that Mimikyu out, try to keep it safe. But if you're switching in the Calyrex Ice Rider to take this attack. It's not really the best position. Maybe hoping for another special attack boost on that Gastrodon, but first this Behemoth Blade from the Zacian going to connect oh. with that Calyrex Ice Rider for the knockout. Yeah, like, Behemoth Blade into Mimikyu and Hyper Beam here is just such a safe play. And the yeah. only re oh, if and you miss here, you did oh. the best! <laughs> Unfortunately,
unfortunately, that Hyper Beam missing. Zashin able to take the Earth Power from that Gastrodon. I, I guess the good thing here is that Kyogre can attack again, right? Because Hyper Beam <laughs> didn't connect. Yeah, like the Mimikyu comes out, you can just Behemoth Blade and Hyper Beam again. So I yeah. think you're probably fine barring another miss. Uh, what's tricky here is, I, I think the way Stefan positioned himself was great, and like that uh, first match strike on a Gastron just to put it in KO range was such a big deal. So the, the miss does extend the game for a little bit, but uh, I, I guess like Shadow Sneak, Mimikyu could go on to Zashin, but I don't even think it knocks out with the critical hit, to be honest, because of the uh, investment that we've seen on the Mimikyu right now. So this is just a really, really tough position at this point. Like, I, you know, you just maybe go for the Hail Mary critical hit, but uh, doesn't even go for it, maybe just hoping, okay, you like misplay and I can like somehow get a Trick Room up. And I think not getting Trick Room up made this game a lot harder, but this matchup is just so tough for Leonard. So that will be the knockout on a Mimikyu. Even if Kyogre misses here, I don't think Gashlock can pull it off with Rillaboom in the back. I would like to see Kyogre use <laughs> Hyper Beam and there it is, with a cheeky little smile as that poor Gastrodon is knocked out and Stefan winning his way, finally getting his first top four placement at the minimum, you know, still could go further than that here in Indianapolis. What a crazy well-played set. Yeah, I think this is just such a nightmare matchup for Leonard, honestly. I, I think the rush room adjustment was cool. You can just see, like, it's so difficult to deal consistent damage across the board. Like, you know exactly what Stefan is going to bring into the matchup. Um, I think the only question